Can we talk for a moment about broken games, please? Games that are released that are functional enough not to get universally panned, but that have some pretty ridiculous and game-breaking bugs that either no one seems to notice or no one bothers to talk about. I never used to notice so many glitches in my games, but I guess as games get bigger and as I get more mature, it's both a case of games having more glitches and me being able to notice them better. The worst thing I see about this is that unless something is almost 100% universal, people will gladly just ignore glitches and bugs for a game they like, but use the same kinds of glitches and bugs as reasons to absolutely pan another game. While I won't be arguing that less popular games with bugs don't deserve their criticism, I just don't know enough to make that argument. I will be saying that popular games that are pretty much universally acclaimed are seemingly exempt from the need to have well-polished games unreleased, which sucks because when there are game-breaking bugs in a Pokemon game or a Metal Gear game, as there were with Pokemon X and Y and Metal Gear Solid 5, those bugs were fixed within a month or so of release. Bethesda in particular is guilty of releasing these absolute messes of glitches and missing features which people have started defending. Somehow, releasing a broken game makes the experience more fun and memorable. So imagine if I released a book with a quarter of the pages having faded, almost illegible text, or if I released a music album with the disc scratch to the point of the songs not playing through. Allow me to make the totally bold and unprecedented argument that perhaps a company should aspire to playtest their game before release, and that if Bethesda were any other company, they would not be getting this praise for, let me repeat it, GAME-BREAKING BUGS AND GLITCHES! You see, when I bought Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition through Steam, the game literally wouldn't turn on, and I wasn't the only one. Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition was literally dead on arrive for some people. And the most hilarious thing is that I don't think Bethesda ever fixed it. Ha <laughs> ha! Bethesda's glitches are so great. They create such memorable moments like not being able to play their fucking game. In the end, I had to use an unofficial patch to even get the game to start. Fans had to mod the game to get it to run in the first place. Let me repeat that. Bethesda's games would not turn on until Bethesda's fans fixed Bethesda's game. So, suffice it to say that if Bethesda was a less well-known or less favorable company which released a broken game, the game would still not be working as there would be no fans who would be working to fix it. Anyway, I played through it and I liked the experience quite a bit. Fallout 4 was boring enough to me without glitches screwing with me, but there were five major glitches I ran into. I played Fallout 4 back when it first came out and unfortunately I lost most of my footage since then. One, where the world completely disappeared in front of me while I was traveling. I had to reset the game to fix this. One, where I kept spawning into an area only to be immediately killed in an infinite death loop. I had to reload a previous save to fix this. One, where I got stuck in a corner in power armor while following the freedom trail. I had to reset the game to fix this. There was no way of getting out of that corner. One where Piper's sister had followed me miles away from Diamond City. I couldn't even interact with her or anything. It was just really weird. And the final one is the most damning, and I'm so angry with myself for not having footage of this. I was recording with my Elgato game capture at the time, and if you know my channel, I have a history with game capture problems. Entire recordings being corrupted and whatnot. So I'm recording and I get this massive glitch that really must be seen to be believed. So I apologize again for not having this footage. But the physics went absolutely haywire. Objects as big as cars were being flung across the entire realm at random. When I entered a broken down house, pots and pans and cans and other debris flew into the air as if some invisible force were lifting them all. The frame rate dipped to a crawl as the game literally seemed to be simulating Armageddon. This lasted for about 15 to 30 minutes and the last example with Piper's sister was actually in the recording which is why I don't have clips of either. My point in mentioning all this is that it gets ignored. Yeah, everyone has different experiences but no one is denying that Fallout 4 is a buggy game. I'm a fairly conservative player, that is to say I generally follow what the game tells me. I don't go out of my way to break a game unless I've already thoroughly beaten it as I have with Twilight Princess and Pokemon Diamond. So the fact that I found so many glitches in Fallout 4 is amazing! I agree with Joseph Anderson on this when he says that the game is objectively flawed and broken and that reviewers who ignore that do the game and their viewers a disservice. What I am about to say may come across as incendiary, but having played this game so much since November 11th, I cannot ignore the disservice that so many review sites have made regarding this title. 
To such an extreme that I can say that any reviewer that gave this more than 3 out of 5 stars should be pushed into whatever part of your memory that houses suspicion. I am not so arrogant to accuse anyone of blatantly lying or pandering to their audience, but this game is so objectively broken in so many technical ways that I can only imagine how many developers of Bethesda are cringing in embarrassment over how many problems they were forced to ignore for the November 11th release deadline. Tell me who you are. I'm Amelia Stockton. I'm not a synth. How can I be sure? Please, you have to believe me. I'm a human being just like you. My father, Old Man Stockton, he will reward you. Just let me out. Please. Welcome to the family. Okay, you're officially hired. For now, I will say that I am not exaggerating when I tell you I can't think of an area or quest in the game that I did not encounter at least one bug, some so bad that I had to restart the game or that it crashed and did it for me. I really like Jim Sterling, but he gets caught into this trap just as easily. He gave Fallout 4 a 9.5 out of 10. I just have to assume that he had a completely glitch-free playthrough and is not one who cares about storytelling in a Bethesda game, but even then I have to call out his bias. Joseph Anderson, who has an amazing analysis of Fallout 4, talks about what he names a Bethesda's bug, an instance in a Bethesda game which could either be a glitch or a missing feature, but which is impossible to label either way because Bethesda and because glitchy games. Proposal of Bethesda's bug, the idea that until enough patches and updates are made that you cannot be sure if an issue in a game is a glitch or a feature that was missing. There are dozens of examples of this in Fallout 4 story alone, including here in Diamond City, but only when you know the whole story. Jim Sterling made an extra video and article praising Fallout 4's ability to have open relationships. How you can sleep with, or sorry, sleep next to, Piper in one instance and get with Preston Garvey without having to end the former relationship. That's cool if it's intentional, but how do we know that it was intentional? Rather than assume Bethesda had the foresight to code for open relationships, when they couldn't even code an ending for if and when a player kills father in the Institute, becoming a father myself this year, if I was put into the shoes of the Fallout 4 character and have his combat talents, well I can show you what I would do if I finally found my son after looking for him for weeks and he was trapped in a goss prison. It goes like this. I can see him. He's safe. I'm not taking any chances with these people. Kill whoever could stop me and get him the fuck out. The game is still on rails. It won't let me make this terrible decision. I'm honestly surprised that father is killable at all here because usually important quest NPCs are immortal. Instead, the game lets me try as much as I want to get out, but the doors will never unlock. Every NPC in the area bugs out and tries to kill me, but they can't get in either. The boy becomes unresponsive and the only answer I have is to sheepishly leave the same way I came in and then tell the Minutemen that we're at war with the Institute without being able to mention what I did or what happened to my boy at all. The game breaks. It is woefully unprepared for my choice. Why not assume that Bethesda simply overlooked the feature and never coded in a check for companions to see whether or not you're already in a relationship? I mean, these are the same companions who, according to Joseph Anderson, you can almost never talk to about goings on during the plot. I wish I was kidding, but that's really what happens. You can't even go back to Diamond City and tell Piper that she's right about the mayor being a synth. You can't do a single thing with any of the information. The game won't let you. In fact, you can never have a single conversation with any of your companions about what you found at the Institute, not even about finding your son. It never comes up. There's no option. I have to think that this is a bug preventing some trigger from flicking over to open these conversations, but once again, Bethesda's bug. Or maybe it could be a Bethesda's bug. Maybe Bethesda did code in checks, but the game glitches out and doesn't register those checks, allowing for open relationships when the game is not made to support that. My point is, rather than assuming that Bethesda made a mistake, as many people, including Jim Sterling, would likely do for a less popular developer, Jim makes the assumption that Bethesda somehow planned for this. Maybe he knows something I don't know about the ideas thrown around during development. But I didn't make this video to bash Bethesda, rather I'm pointing out that games we like get a pass when games we dislike don't. I really wanted to like Metal Gear Online 3, but that too was a buggy mess. I mean, the bugs were just the start of the problems with that game, but I won't go into all the other stuff. Waking three people through walls. Falling through the map. I 
getting stuck on a loading screen after the match has already started. Boom, 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 boom. I gotta stop doing that. No, it's glitching! Come on, man, it's glitching. What the heck? I'm stuck on a black screen. Look, I'm getting kicked for inactivity when I'm stuck. I wasn't even in the game. I just, I, I took off my headphones, checked for a second. I was stuck behind a black screen this entire time. The HUD disappearing. Look how long the spawn delay is. And then I'll, I'll spawn back in with no HUD. I'll just spawn back in with no HUD. Also, I, I don't know what's going on with the score. Did we lose? You see, I have no HUD right now. I can still draw my gun. It won't let me choose a different weapon. I don't know who my teammates are and who aren't. Spawning out of bounds. There were so many glitches in an online experience with so little content, which I think evidences my argument that the game was not finished and not given the resources it needed to survive. That's normal survive, not Metal Gear survive, which can die in a fucking fire for all I care. Little Big Planet 3 was a game I really wanted to like as well. I absolutely loved Little Big Planet 2 and had a glowing review about how its lighthearted and totally unnecessary story was actually really fun and worthwhile. So I had high hopes when going into Little Big Planet 3, which turned out to be a glitchy mess. This hurt me so bad that I never did a review of Little Big Planet 3. I wasn't honest with you guys because I didn't want to tear down a series which I had liked so much, and I apologize for that, sincerely. And now I'll mention some of the many problems I had with that game, glitch-wise. Please note that this was back when the game first came out, so many of these issues may have been fixed, but I think I checked about a couple months to a year after the game had come out, and many of these issues were not fixed. Number 1. One of the DLCs from the last game is unplayable in Little Big Planet 3, rendering you unable to get many of the items and content that you technically already paid for. Number 2. Some of the tools in Create Mode would cause the game to glitch out or crash when used. Number 3. Create Mode can get so buggy that even the cursor won't work correctly. Objects will be unable to be selected, and sometimes objects will shrink or grow to extreme degrees when selected. Number four, the game will constantly tell you that your stage is too complex or running out of space, even when you have barely anything on the level and the thermometer is empty. Number five, the game crashes a lot, to the point that a level I created was unplayable because it would crash on selection, meaning I had to stop working on that level I had spent days on and start a new one. Funnily enough, in getting footage for this video, Little Big Planet 3 actually crashed upon reinstalling, which is all too perfect for what I'm getting at. Then it gave me a message saying my profile is corrupt. The game is so broken that I was actually able to replicate this on a second account. Fuck this game. One day I may just record the Little Big Planet 3 review and release it for you guys, but writing that review made me feel actively bad because I was immature and I didn't want to attack a game that I liked, even though I very much deserved it. And lastly, speaking of attacking a game I like, it's time to move on to Dragon Age Inquisition. Besides Fallout 4, Dragon Age Inquisition is perhaps the buggiest game I have ever played. I still really like it and I think that it made vast improvements on many areas of Dragon Age 2. However, it cannot be ignored that this game is a fucking broken mess. That infinite death loop I mentioned in Fallout 4 is also featured in Inquisition. But this one is more egregious. The Fallout 4 glitch can be chalked up to the randomness in the game. But with this death loop, I was dying over and over just from falling into a pit. This means that this pit was completely overlooked in playtesting, which begs the question, why even put a bottomless pit there if the checkpoints in that area had not been playtested? This game has some hilarious Bethesda-esque feature not glitch glitches, like what I dubbed the Skywalker glitch, where when you talk to an NPC after jumping, you may never land, which results in this hilarity. <laughs> I, I will give what counsel I can. <laughs> I would like to know more about the orb he carries. I'm still floating. Oh, <laughs> look at this. This is preposterous. <laughs> I fell.
found so many glitches in this game, I can't even believe it. I'm just stuck like this. In this cutscene, Iron Bull completely disappears, which gets really funny when they start talking about spies. And send reports on what's happened. But I also get reports from Ben Hasworth agents all over Olay. You sign me on, I'll share them with your people. You're a Kunari spy and you just told me. Whatever happened at that Conclave thing, it's bad. Someone needs to get that breach closed. So whatever I am, I'm on your side. You still could have hidden what you are. From something called the Inquisition? <laughs> I'd have been tipped sooner or later. Better you hear it right up front from me. A giant somehow managed to fall through the ground and get itself killed in this clip. And for physics glitches, this wolf completely avoids my static cage. Whoa! Did you see that? He glitched the hell- like, Will he go back? He won't go back! And this dragon flung me halfway across the map. There are party members being dead, but standing as if they were still alive. Is Vivian dead? Or is she not dead? I can't even interact. Oh yeah, okay. Let me interact, see what happens. Vivian? Vivian! Where did Vivian go? Well, she's over there now. And still undead. And when that's all over, Corypheus is defeated and you beat the game. But I swear this ending cutscene is glitched. I mean, is Corypheus invisible or is this implied to be some sort of symbolism or something like that? I don't even remember what it looked like in my other playthrough, honestly. Do not, ancient ones, I beseech you. If you exist, if you ever truly existed, aid me now. <laughs> But even if that isn't glitched, I'll tell you what is, I couldn't even talk to Varric during the ending party dinner. Like, what the heck? What, is he giving me the cold shoulder, ignoring me? Did he unfriend me on Facebook? What is this? But those are the ha-ha random glitches. Why am I calling this the buggiest game I've ever played if all those glitches seem relatively harmless? Well, for that, we have to talk about my second playthrough of the game. You see, I played through Inquisition on Nightmare Mode two times. The first time I got through it, I wasn't awarded the trophy because of some glitch that reverted the difficulty back to casual while I was playing. I think this happened because I started a new data with a different character on casual mode, and when I restarted my Nightmare Mode playthrough, it carried that difficulty over for some reason. So even though I noticed and switched it back to nightmare mode fairly early on, and even though I played through 99.8 of the game in nightmare mode, the game didn't give me the trophy. So I had to play through the game again. This time around, I was severely underleveled as I was just trying to rush through. And get this, the only reason I got through the game the second time is because this game is broken as all hell. Before I get to that, I have to talk about the AI in this game. The AI in this game is horrible absolutely horrible. The party AI constantly ignores things that you tell it to do. They won't use potions or certain talents unless you manually take control of them in some instances. When you use a necromancer spell on an enemy which comes back to life, more often than not, the new ally will just stand around not doing anything. It won't go after other enemies, it will literally just stand there until it dies. I ended up using the necromancer spell to deal extra damage to enemies who were still alive. This made it one of the most broken spells in my experience. Sometimes, especially during high stakes boss battles like fights with dragons, the party members will literally just freeze. Their AI completely stops working, and this can happen several times during a single boss battle. 
So you fight the dragon, which plays out much like a normal dragon battle with a dumb AI getting in the way. The only way to unfreeze the character is to take manual control of them and make them jump or use an ability like a dodge roll or a frost step to reset their animations. You can see how when you're in the middle of a battle with a fucking dragon on nightmare mode, having your companions completely stop moving until you manually control them might be a bit of an issue. But the world of AI glitches is fair. You see, what the companions suffer from is also something that the enemies in the game suffer from. On my second play, there I beat Dragon Age Inquisition on Nightmare Mode because the AI of the final bosses stopped working. I only beat Inquisition because the final bosses would not attack me halfway through. Not that they could not, but they would not. Their AI completely bugged out allowing me to beat the game when I was massively underleveled. This reminds me of that A-plus start playthrough of Sonic 06 when he beat the final boss because the game glitched out and went straight to the end cutscene. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, what the hell does- I defeated the boss without doing anything. So yeah, that's my experience of Inquisition in a nutshell. It's a game I really enjoy that is plagued with devastating glitches and issues, but my point of talking about these issues is that they never get talked about. In Bethesda games, glitches are fun and funny and add to the experience. They are ignored as far as review scores go. But when a game is bad, glitches are often cited as one of the reasons for bad scores. In this video, I'm hoping to shed light on some of the major issues that plague both games I like and games I don't in an attempt to be fair. Any game can have glitches, sure, but even minor glitches can ruin the experience of a game. And just because something might be minor, or seem funny, or even awesome to you, doesn't excuse the fact that it's a glitch and it got overlooked, and for some people it's probably ruining the experience. Like, with my friend Isaac who is playing Uncharted 4 multiplayer, and everything unlocked for him. Like, that might seem cool to some people to have all these stuff unlocked right away and all the exploits, but it could have gotten his account banned and it ruined the progression for him. It gave him no reason to keep playing the game. The glitch with Ellie's hair in The Last of Us haunted my playthrough of that game to the point where I was always afraid to play as Ellie. I was more afraid of Ellie's hair than the actual zombies. Get ready. It's gonna happen when I throw the Molotov. Go check down there. I even strongly considered not getting the HD remaster if the glitch was not fixed. Thankfully, during my playthrough of the remaster and the Ellie DLC, I never noticed the glitch again. Hell, I gave Final Fantasy 13 and 13 2 a load of crap, which they deserved, but at least those games aren't broken. I don't think I've ever found a glitch or bug in my extensive time with Final Fantasy 13. I played those games for over a hundred hours not even including my other game files. So while I still think the games were badly made, a lot can be said about the care that went into making sure the games ran smoothly and without issues. Does every glitch have to be extensively tested and patched before a game is released? No. Does the existence of a single glitch mean that the game is a broken mess that justifies a low review score? No. I, for one, think that most review scores are a joke anyway. I think that ultimately, a review is just a single opinion which speaks to a single player's experience, whether it comes from a know-nothing like me or a big site like The Escapist or IGN. No one has a PhD in video game studies that I know of. These are just guys that play games who like what they like and don't like what they don't like. However, there's something more important about gamers and reviewers as a whole calling certain games the best of all time when they are so littered with bugs and issues. It means that as a culture, we hold ourselves to such low standards and we are willing to defend companies which regularly release problem-ridden products. And it's gotten to the point where we look forward to finding glitches in Bethesda games. We can't get upset with one company for neglecting quality assurance but excuse another. Please comment below about your experiences with glitches in games, both that you like and dislike. Subscribe to my channel for more game commentary and goofs, and as always, thanks for watching.